So this is where the academic buildings are. <laughs> I just found, if you'd had them this nice when I was here, I might have came more. <laughs> But they do have that. They, somebody said it to that, they, that chair and, and table over at the uh, library. They still have my name on that. That's where I was. <laughs> so unfortunately, there were shackles underneath. They had to shackle me to the corner in the chair to get me to do it. But no, it was it's, uh, very proud, like, like Craig said, and everyone else. It's amazing when you get an honor bestowed upon you like this and how grateful and humble it, it makes you. Because I don't think and none of us ever went into athletics thinking we we're going to try to be in some kind of Hall of Fame. We did it because we loved what we were doing. And, you know, just like Craig said, he loved ball. I, I loved all ball. I played football, basketball, baseball. I did everything in the world. And I was a kid, no matter if I was in my school clothes, my Sunday school clothes, if I was walking with my girlfriend, if the ball rolled on the field, That's it. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> I'm going to get some new pants and had a lot of girlfriends because a lot of them left me because <laughs> I had to go play. But that, that was me. I just loved to play. And, uh, you know, it is very humbling to stand here. And uh, it's uh, amazing the time goes by. And as I drove through the gates and – as uh, I had my two sons with me, and I said, you know, boy, stories started coming back. And they said, and, and somebody told me, I said, I said, I don't know what to do in my speech. And like Craig said, well, I'll start telling, tell stories of when you were at Sanford. And I said, okay. So I drove through the gates today, and I was, and I was still trying to finish my speech like, like Craig. And I said, okay, I'll tell that story. Well, no, I ain't going to tell that story. <laughs> and I started to tell that story. No, I ain't going to tell that story either. <laughs> so I got through about five of them. I said, if I tell any of them, they're going to take, take that plaque down in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell any of those stories. I'll have one or two here at the end for you. But I'll think of one while I'm up here. How about that? But, but it is. And, and Sanford has, has meant so much to me. And as, as we were saying earlier, I don't know if there's a university that can touch kids and students like Sanford does. I really mean that. When you talk about the spiritual aspect, you're talking about the personal aspect, you're talking about the academic aspect and the athletic aspect. And to set and, and change your life. And I'm going to say right now, you know, you make, I always tell our players every day, the choices in life make you. The most important power you have as an individual is the choices you make because that means you control what happens to you. You can't blame nobody else. There's two knuckleheads on the corner and you're hanging out with them and they're doing something bad and you choose to stay there, that's your fault. If somebody else is over here doing something good and you, and you want to choose to be with them, then you get rewarded for that. It's about choices. And I'm going to tell you, one of the best choices I ever made was the day I transferred to Sanford. And I was, a very, and I was having a lot of success at, at the different programs. Like I say, I only played one year here. I only got to play one year here. And uh, it's ironic, but Sanford has been intertwined in my life so much in my athletic life, in my coaching life. There, as I tell some of the stories and, and the things, and I'll, that's the one story I can tell. I just thought of that one. I can tell that one. <laughs> that one's all right. You'll like that one. You won't take my plaque down. All right, but no, it, it, it does. It means so much. But it, this university can touch you in so many ways, and there's not many universities like it in, in, in the country. And when I transferred here, it was, I was blessed, and i never forget my, my brother, who ended up, as I say, Sanford's family to me. My brother played here. You saw that picture in there when I was coaching, that 84 behind me. That was my brother. He came here in 1989 and played on the 89-90, and then the 91-92 teams that went to the national semifinals and, and, the, and the national quarterfinals that year. Matter of fact, when we went to Youngstown, as it was about 25 degrees and blowing snow and ice and sleet and everything else, and he was from West He was the only one ready to play. <laughs> the rest of the rest of us southern, the other southern boys, they didn't want no part of that thing. But uh, it was, and, and it was big. And I'll never forget the day I said I was going to leave and go with Terry because Terry called me. And I'll tell you what, Terry is a musician. The Bowden family, I've been around him a long time, and I've been intertwined with them very much. And I was always accused of being an honorary Bowden. They always, a lot of people thought I was a Bowden. Like that picture in there when I got the national plaque, that was Jeff Bowden, who was the offensive coordinator. Jeff was my offensive coordinator at Sanford. Terry was the head coach. You know, and then, of course, I ended up being with Bobby and, and, uh, at those times. But they, that family and the things that went on just intertwined. Because as I tell the story, and I didn't realize this, when Sanford brought football back in 1984, they played a team called Salem College. And uh, Salem had a team, Terry Bowden was the coach. And uh, there was about 13 or 14 Division I transfers that went to an NAIA one school. You remember that NAIA days, guys, you guys in the back? It didn't matter what your age was and who it was, you could get in school and play. You could play. <laughs> we actually got about six NFL guys that came in. And uh, we played at school, and they, they, they were starting football back. That was 1984, and we come down and played Sanford University. And I was a starting quarterback as a freshman. The first game I ever played in my life in college football was against Sanford University. Uh, and I was scared when my transfer later, and I'll explain, because we won the game 82-9. to nine. <laughs> it, was, it was tough. And uh, so it was very – but then I played my last game for Sanford. I mean, how many times you ever play your first game against an opponent and your last one for? It was ironic. Well, then the next year when I was coaching, 
I became an assistant coach. I coached my first game as an assistant coach, as a quarterback coach for Sanford University. And then when I was at Florida State, I became the head coach in 2010. And ironically, uh, wasn't supposed to be the head coach of 2011. They made some decisions with Coach Bowden and, and whatever was going on. And as the Lord being, I stayed out of that, I promise. And because uh, that man was, it was, he was an idol to me and, and a hero. And they made me the head coach a year early. You know, ironically, who my first game was ever coached against? Sanford University. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. And then, then, I, then I found out later there's been two All American quarterbacks in Sanford University history. One was Bobby Bowden, one of them was Jimbo Fisher. And I said, the intertwining of the relationship and then to go coach at Florida State, to be at Sanford, you don't think the good Lord doesn't work in funny ways? And uh, the choice to come to Sanford, one of the top choices of my life. I pray to God the one I just made just as good. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was just as good. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and like I say, it touches you spiritually, and it does. And it touches you academically. I mean, all the things y'all were saying, I mean, you know, and the national, you know, and you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't real impressed in the beginning. You're talking about your academics, and you're talking about you're the top school in the state, and you're doing this. Oh, my God, you're only competing against Alabama and Auburn, so that don't even count. I mean, how is that? Huh? Academic? That doesn't even count now. Daggone. Then you start bringing the national stats out. Then it was a little better. That was a little better. <laughs> no, but it was. But it does. It can touch you academically and, and, and the degrees and, and, the, and the lessons you learn here. And then I, I think personally, I, I think the one thing about Sanford University, as I think about when I, when I talk about building our, our program at Texas A&M, and like I had to do it at Florida State, anywhere you take over, and you have to create your own culture and what your culture is and how you want your people to be and the way they think and the way they believe. If there's a better culture than Sanford University, I've never seen it. I've been, around, I've been around college athletics a long time. And the spiritual development, the personal development, and how it can make me really appreciate things in your life. Because when you're a child and you go 100 miles an hour and you want to play ball, you take so many things for granted. And I, and I say a special thanks to, there's two people that allowed me to ever have what I have in life, and that was my mom and my dad. And uh, my mom, uh, I was blessed to have two hardworking, very down-to-earth people. Uh, my dad was a coal miner, as you all know. Uh, died at 62 years old. He was actually blown up in a coal mine when I was two. And I uh, spent six months in the hospital. And uh, I mean, I could tell you, I mean, he was burnt, he was broken, he was beaten. And uh, I never forget it coming out. And I can remember walking up at, when I was just three when I, when I first was allowed to go up and see him and all burnt and crying. And anything he had was a picture of me sitting beside him on his, on his desk. And, and it, my mom always said, because he said he wanted to die, he was hurting so bad. And she said, well, here's your reason to live. And he said it by me. And, uh, you know, the sacrifices he made and then went on as he got back and got out of the hospital and we had a farm and he was a little kid and he built 200 some acres and he built fence around it for rehab to get stronger. Then the next year he went back to the coal mines. So work ethic, desire, the, the ability to overcome, the ability to, to not be that way. And my mom was a school teacher. She was a chemistry physics teacher, the most brilliant lady I ever met in my life. She made one B in her life and she was going on to be a doctor and she decided she liked teaching and I still get on her every, I could have been a rich, spoiled doctor's kid. I had everything in the world. Poor I was a coal miner and a teacher's kid. I had to scratch and claw for everything I got. I could have had everything. I get on her every day. But no, she taught chemistry and physics for 51 years and retired at 76 years old. She's now 81 and subs full time and took a full time sub job at 81 years old. So the work ethic and the sacrifice, that's the reason I'm here. And, uh, and I say, when I, and I transferred to Sanford, I will never forget, I was at Salem College, which wasn't far away from my home in West Virginia, and I knew it was the best for my future. I think choices in life, you have to look. I try to tell our players every day, don't make choices for, most kids make choices for what gets them what they want in the next 10 seconds or tomorrow. What's it going to be five years down the road, 10 years down the road? And Terry called and, and, you know, and, and asked me to come down here in and, and Sanford, and I said, do we have a little better players than we had down there three years ago? <laughs> he said, we're going to bring some. I said, okay. No, it wasn't. We had a lot of great players. That was the first time back with football. You had freshmen on scholarship. It was, it was a heck of a time when you're starting to rebuild a program, as we did. You'll see in a minute when we were able to go to 1AA from Division Three. We went through those same growing pains until we got there. But, uh, you know, it was a sacrifice because my, well, my brother was, when you talk about sacrifice, my dad, my mom, my brother was still in high school. And then uh, he would play a Friday night game. As soon as the game was over, they'd get in the car and drive 11 and a half hours, never sleep, watch me play on Saturday, go to the, go to the and I remember going to the hotel, wasn't spending much time as I could before they fell asleep. They got up on Sunday and drove back so they couldn't miss work. And they did it. They did that for a whole year. And then my brother signed here, and my dad about beat him to death. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I got the two dumbest boys in the world. 
He said, but it was. It was, it was a sacrifice, and, and, but that ethic, that work ethic, and then the cultural ability to come here and create the culture that Sanford does and that develops you as a person. And, you know, it's been the, truly the foundation and of why I've been successful in my life. I think they provide the work ethic and the sacrifice and the things they do. And, and like I say, with my two boys here, I have Ethan and Trey here, and uh, they're a lot of my, I mean, if I can be half the parents they were, I'll be blessed. And, uh, you know, as I say, they're the reason you get out of bed every day, the reason you family. But that, that, when I was at Sanford, I think I started to realize that because I truly saw the sacrifices. Because as a kid, you take so many things for granted as you went. And Sanford kind of drew, if just being around the people here, it mattered. And the little things and how they followed the university, how they cared, how they interacted with each other. And it was just different than anywhere I'd ever been. Not that the other people were, you know, where I come from, it was a hard, hard life. You had to scratch and claw for everything you got. And those thoughts didn't come in very often. You know what I'm saying? And I was kind of an outsider coming in this university from a mentality standpoint, from the cultural standpoint. And it, it opened my eyes in so many different ways as a person to really enjoy and appreciate the things you had in life and the people who sacrificed to put you in those situations. I tell our players this every day. I said, I want you to be a hero. And they think, well, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, we're going, I'm going to try to. And I said, no, here's a hero. A guy does a job every day. And I said, somebody, a hero to me is the people who were heroes never set out to be heroes. I said, somebody was a hero to put you in that seat. There was a mom and a dad that worked a job, or a grandma and a grandpa that might have worked two jobs or three jobs or drove you to every practice that never slept, that slept two hours. We all have them. As athletes, we all had those people who, who made us heroes. And it, it started to make me think and open my eyes. And as, as I got into ball and I played as long as I could, and that's like today in that picture, they were, they were talking about, you know, man, you're around basketball players and volleyball players. Man, you feel small. They said, Coach, you're going to stand in the back. I said, no, they're too big. And I said, if I was that big, I wouldn't have been playing here. <laughs> if I was 6'4". But I'm blessed that I did. God, I say, God bless you. Being 5'9", I could have played in your family. I'd have been the biggest in your family, right? Man, I'd, I'd have been the tallest guy in the family. 5'7 was the biggest. No, he went 6 foot. You had one 6 footer, didn't you? I'd have been second. But... Uh, but no, God bless you for a lot of reasons. You take, you take what you have and you go where you got to go, and, and God leads you in, in a lot of different ways. And, and I think it, it, it blessed me by coming to Sanford. It really did. And uh, it opened my eyes, and, and I knew that I wanted to coach, and I wanted to go do the things that, that I wanted to give back to those people. And, and, and without being at Sanford, I don't think those things would have ever been possible. I really don't. And uh, it's an amazing place. It's an amazing place. And Chris, now that I'm back in the SEC, and uh, uh, now that we get to, we, in the ACC, you never get to come through Birmingham. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 for some reason, you're always up that East Coast and everything here. And I say, I want to be a huge part of this. I want to help, and I want to give back to the, and be a part of this in any way we shape, we can to uh, promote this university. Because I mean, it's changed so many lives. And you know, from Coach Bowden to myself to all the great people that have ever been at Chris and what you're doing. You have two, two straight playoff years again, and it's amazing. It's fun. I, I check the scores every, every, every week, and I always see what we're doing when every sport and try to find it. And I always felt a part of it. And I just, for a guy who came in for one year, the way it made me felt and the way the people here made me felt was amazing. Birmingham is always special in my heart. It really is. I feel like I'm a, almost a native Birmingham guy, but I bet I won't when I come back to play Auburn, Alabama. I bet it won't be that <laughs> <laughs> I know it's going to be different, but, you know, it, it, just very lucky to be able to stand here and uh, be a part of it. And again, hope my sons will be able to have a chance to experience the things in college and the people around them that I did and pick a good college that allows you to grow as a person. And we talk about the athletics, I know, but, but spiritually, and, and that's what it does as a coach. I, I think it's opened my eyes to want to give back as a coach. And now some, like, I'm, like, I'm like your dad a little bit. Sometimes I will say a few things. Sometimes my motives are, are not always perceived that way, but they, they do come from the heart. And I think you want to affect and give back to so many kids. And when you talk about how athletics gives back, I mean, I think athletics teach you just so many different things in the competitive world. And we all want to, as I say, sometimes we're in a little bit of that kumbaya where we want to roast marshmallows and by the fire and give everybody a trophy. Well, life isn't like that. You know what I mean? And I think athletics is, is such a great buffer to teach kids how to compete and do things in life. And if you can take those same qualities you're on the field and a coach can give you to take them to the classroom, take them to the business world, I think you're 10 steps ahead of everybody else in the world because I think you understand how to work and compete and do things. But uh, it is, I'm very humbled. I can say I've, uh, very often, I say this all the time, I've been able to be very fortunate in the coaching world. I don't say I've been able to, again, as uh, you're ever around me, I said, I, don't, I, I said my mouth gets me better players. So I'm, I'm a lot better coach with good players. I learned that a long time ago. And I've been very fortunate to be around a, a lot of, uh, there have been some national championship teams at different universities. Been very blessed to coach some of the best guys in, in pro football. They're all pros and doing everything. And, and we always, you know, in every time in life that that coaching gets tough and you start to complain and you do that, and we got this and we got that. I take my mind and I say, you know what? Go back to Sanford University in 1988. 
And how many hours you spend 20 hours a day with, as I say, some of these young coaches, I don't know if they'd done it. When they had to do the old cut-ups on the 16 millimeter films and splice them up and put them all up on the wall and you had tape and you had room full of tape. I mean, <laughs> like a room like this would be half full of, with about 20, all your plays in a row, you had to go through every tape and cut them out, tape them up, then go back and piece them together and do all the things to get you back in coaching. And then some knucklehead would come by and bump them and knock them all on the floor and flip them <laughs> over there. And you, after, after the three fist fights you just had, then it was over. But the sacrifice you did, but I didn't have to go find another job so I could pay my rent because we wasn't making no money. And that's the truth. I mean, I remember when I was the offensive coordinator here and we went to the national playoffs and the semis and I was making $17,000 a year. 91, 92, and had to get another job to help pay my rent and be able to pay the bills. But I wouldn't have traded it for the world. And whenever I think things are tough out there today, I take my rhyme right back to here. Just like when I was a kid, when the ball rolled out, I could not play. Just like when they, when they started the game and you wanted to coach, I could not coach. I wanted to be a part of athletics. I'm too dumb to get a real job, so I had to coach. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it, it just was the heart and soul of everything I did and what I came from, I think started right here at Sanford University. And it can't start at home, but in my coaching profession, in the ball profession, the things and the successes I've been able to have right now came from Sanford. And I don't think it, the athletic qualities were there. I think it was more the spiritual and the culture of Sanford that helped me appreciate those things and cultivate those things that I can hopefully pass them on before. But I'm very humbled. Uh, God bless you, Chris. I wish you nothing but the best in the future and everybody else in Sanford. Thank you all. Well, I know uh, all of us in this room are glad.